Okay, here we go into chapter seven, which is your basic computer principles. Um, this is out of your uh, computer book, so make sure that you read the objectives and what is going to be covered and that you be able to define everything and list the common types of monitors and software and different things that we're going to be using. So here's your key terms um, that you'll need to know. So the basic definition of a computer. So it's a programmable electronic device that can store, retrieve, and process data. How does it work? So the computer consists of input, output, and processing devices. So the input devices are, you know, all your ancillary things. So your keyboards, your mice, your microphone, and as you guys know in clinic, you can do the scan bars. There's touch screen, and um, there's also some image scanners. The output devices are your printers, your monitors, your speakers, that kind of thing. So the computer consists of input, output, and processing devices. So the, the computer also has various communication devices it uses uh, to share information. So the uh, processing of information is done by the CPU. And the CPU, just so you guys know, is the central processing unit, just in case you've missed that. So it reads it in binary code, if you haven't seen that before. So binary code, it's the language of the machine, and it's um, ones and zeros. So processing is performed by a series of um, transistors, which are switches that turn on and off. So if the circuit is closed and the current passes through it, it is assigned a value of number one. If the circuit is open and the current does not pass through, it is assigned a zero um, value. So open and the current goes through, or I'm sorry, if the current is closed and the current passes through it, it's assigned a value of one. If it's open and the current passes does not pass through it, it's assigned a zero. If the computer's transistors can be switched on and off millions of times in a second, so that's kind of cool very, very fast. So a bit is a single unit of data, so um, a one or a zero. A byte is made up of eight bits, so eight pieces of ones and zeros. Um, the amount of memory needed to store one alphanumeric uh, character, so that's a byte. So memory is defined by the number of bytes. So there's kilobytes, megabytes, gigabytes, terabytes are really big. And you can see here um, the translation of the uh, letters into the binary code there. So hardware components. The case, which is the outside, is made up of a heavy metal. It has two functions. It holds the, computer, uh, the components in a relatively cool, clean, and safe environment. So um, if you bump it with your chair, you're not going to hit the actual components on the inside. You'll hit the hard case. It also keeps the dust out. Serves uh, the outside environment from the, uh, oh, shield, sorry, shields the outside environment from the radio frequencies being emitted by the electronic components of the computer. And that's really big when we get into MRI. So two major configurations, you, there's the desktop model and the tower model. So the desktop model, it's horizontal, usually placed on the desk below the monitor, uh, occupies the biggest, um, occupies space is the biggest disadvantage. So it's uh, smaller, the smaller the box, the less room for expansion. So um, the tower model is vertical and that's what's underneath the desk. So when you have to reach down underneath to turn on the unit, that's your tower provides adequate room for expansion and does not interfere with workspace. Um, but it does take up the room underneath your desk. So you can see here the desktop model we have right here, desktop, and here's your tower. So I know you guys are familiar with both, so I'm not going to spend any more time on that. So the motherboard is the largest circuitry board inside the computer. Sounds like a good test question. So. Um, it contains many important small components to make the computer function properly. So the motherboard components consist of CPU, the CMOS, the BIOS, the bus, the ports, and the memory. So within the motherboard, you have the CPU, the CMOS, the BIOS, the bus, the ports, and the memory. Okay, it's all within the motherboard. So your CPU 
is a microprocessor. It's a small chip found in the motherboard. It's considered the brains of the computer. If you see that I have something in bold, it's bold because I want you to pay attention to it, okay? So the microprocessors, pro, the microprocessor is a series of transistors that are arranged in order to manipulate data received from software. So the basic task of the CPU are to read data from storage, manipulate the data, and then move it, move the data back to storage or send it to some kind of in, you know external device for storage. Um, such as monitors or printers. So the microprocessor is named after the maker at which and the speed at which it manipulates data. So here's a microprocessor. Um, the first one's made by Intel is the 8088. Um, now you know you hear the Pentium whatever you know is the latest greatest you know microprocessor. So um, so the 8088 and uh, needed about 12 cycles to complete one basic instruction. Modern Pentium processors can complete one instruction per cycle. So it's very, very, very fast now. All right, the BIOS contains a simple set of instructions for the computer. The microprocessor uses the BIOS during the boot up process of the computer to help bring the computer to life. So it runs the startup diagnostics on the system. So it makes sure all the peripherals are functioning properly. It oversees the basic functions of receiving and interpreting signals. So it acts as the intermediary between the operating system and the hardware. The bus is a series of connections, controllers, and chips that create the information highway of the computer. Okay, so the bus is a series of connections and controllers and chips that creates the information highway. So several buses throughout the computer connect the microprocessor, uh, the system uh, memory, and various peripherals. So the PCI, so that's the peripheral component interconnect bus on the motherboard serves as a connection of information for the various adapters. So other buses found within the computer are the small computer system interface, so the SCSI, the accelerated graphic port for video adapters, so the AGP, and the universal series serial bus um, for a variety of devices such as USB. So the USB is the universal serial bus, that's what it stands for. So memory, also known as random um, access memory, so RAM stores information being currently processed within the CPU on a temporary basis. So it takes the data from the CPU so that the CPU can handle the processing needs of the programs that are running. So there's a lot of different types. Um, there's the dynamic RAM, the extended data output RAM, the video RAM, the shadow RAM. Um, if you're really into gaming, you're going to get that uh, VRAM. So your video RAM, make sure that you can play your video games at a high speed and not be bogged down by not having enough memory. So um, moving forward, so computers have high level of programs and graphics require more memory to function at acceptable levels. So most modern computers have a SD RAM DDR, so double data rate, but some may have a RD RAM, which is Rambus Dynamic RAM for high graphic programs. So Memory is measured in bytes. So that's one thing I want you to remember. So memory is found in configurations such as 128 megabytes, 512, one gig. Um, memory of some of the first PCs came in 16 kilobyte blocks and sold for approximately $100, which equates to approximately $4,000 per megabyte. Things have changed, haven't they? All right, so ports. Um, there are connectors on the PC that linked adaptive cards, drives, printers, scanners, keyboards, mice, and other peripherals. So the different types of parts, ports are parallel, serial, USB, IDE, and SCSI. Those are your different ports. So your parallel port, um, it's usually a 25-pin connector. It's found in the bow back of most, most PCs. So a parallel point, port is synonymous with a printer port. Um, the, your serial port is used universally for many components plugged into the computer, such as a mouse. Uh, serial port can only send one bit of data down a single wire. So 
Most serial ports are nine pin, but can have up to 25 pins also. So your USB port. So USB port is common interface connection between um, most modern devices. Multiple devices can be connected into one port. The user can connect up to 127 devices to one single USB port, and most computers have more than one USB port available, so that's interesting. Integrated drive electronic ports, so IDE. Uh, it's found on the motherboard to connect the hard drive, floppy drive, and CD-ROM drive to the board. So a series of ribbon cables run through the computer to connect the IDE devices to the IDE port on the motherboard. So that's how the motherboard and um, it communicates with everything. So your SCSI port is the fastest and most versatile way for a computer to communicate with its peripherals. So a single SCSI controller can manage up to seven devices through a daisy chain connector. Don't worry, I won't make you know that what a daisy chain connector is, but just know that it, it's the best way to communicate with your peripherals. So most common SCSI devices are hard drives, CD-ROMs, scanners, and printers. You do need to know those. Okay, so looking, sorry, I had a dog issue. So looking here at your CMOS, so CMOS is a special type of memory chip. So it uses a small rechargeable um, or a lithium battery, battery to retain information about the PC hardware uh, while the computer is turned off. So it houses the system clock, okay? So that's an important part that keeps track of the date and the time. So the clock uses a vibrating quartz crystal that sets the speed of the CPU. So a single tick of the clock represents the time it takes um, to turn a transistor on and off. So a PC with the 3 uh, gigahertz CPU would have a system clock that would tick 3 billion times per second. So any changes in the system after a last basic system configuration will be uh, detected and all the systems will be prompted to install new hardware. So your sound card. So the card contains all the circuitry for recording and reproducing the sound on the PC. It may be in the form of an expansion card or built into several chips in the motherboard. So an external port connecting the following. So you could have speakers or headphones or microphones, a CD player input into the computer. So the card interprets many different types of files. Um, just as most common for you guys is probably the MP3. So the network interface card, so the NIC. It enables the PC to connect to other PCs that are on the same network. So uh, it can come as an expansion card plugged into a slot or as part of the motherboard circuitry. Okay, so the RJ45 adapter jack at the rear of the PC for the acceptance of twisted pair wire of RJ45 connector. Um, the most important thing is that it's um, it can be as an expansion card. So. The interface card, as you can see here, this um, you will recognize that plug. And here's your RJ45 adapter jack, and then you can see your RJ45 connector. So once you see these, this makes a lot more sense here. Um, so uh, it's one way to connect um, to other PCs that are on the same network. That's an important part of the NIC. So the power supply. It delivers electricity to the PC. So it also contains a fan, so it keeps the computer cool. And it transforms and converts the wall outlet uh, AC to DC. So that's the most important thing I want you to know there. Uh, the power supply is designed to take the brunt of a surge. So any kind of power surge, you're going to blow your power supply. So it's easy to change out and it's not that expensive. So if there's any kind of power surge that's there to protect your computer. The hard drive, so the main repository for programs and documents on your PC. So you hear every once in a while that your hard drive crashed and you're in big trouble. Hopefully you have a backup. So it's made up of many hard, thin, magnetic platters stacked one on top of the other. So disks are spun at a high rate of speed by a small motor. So they read, they write heads, guides to the area of the house and particular information needed to read or write as asked. 
So as storage capacity increases, the price per gigabyte decreases. So think of Costco. The more you buy, the cheaper it gets. So hard drives are the slowest part of the PC because they are both electrical and mechanical. So i um, not going to spend a lot of time on CDs and DVD drives, but as you know, it pops out and it gets read. So go ahead and read this. Um, it gives you some idea of what they are. Um, there's three main types of CDs and DVD drives. So there's the ROM, which is the read-only memory, the R, which is write once, read many times, so you can burn on them once and then that's it. So the RW is the read and the write, and you can do that many times. So uh, the RW are the most expensive ones. So CD-ROM drives uh, were the early drives placed into the computer. So modern computers now have CD-RWs so where you can uh, read and write many times or CD-DVD-RWs. So information is burned onto the disk uh, starting in the center, spiraling out to the edge of the disk. So the laser burns a tiny depression pits into the disk, representing the data being saved. A burned disk is a series of pits and lands, um, areas that were not burned by the laser. Uh, Two-sided DVDs can be burned on both sides for double capacity. CD DVD drives is found on the front of the encasement that consists of, has a disk tray, a motor, a read head and possibly a write head. So you need those things in order to uh, watch. Okay, so with your keyboard, um, there's two basic types. There's a soft and the click. So depression of the keys produces that audible sound. Um, the first keyboard was made by IBM where the click. So keyboards connect with either a, a PS2 connection, a USB connection or wireless, uh, infrared or radio. So when the keys are depressed, a signal is sent to the switchboard, um, to the switch of the motherboard, where it is interpreted by the keyboard microprocessors. Processors. Keyboards should be kept clean, no food or drink, and should never be consumed, um, Food and drink should never be consumed near the keyboard. Um, I'm a huge violator of that right now. So the mouse, it's a device with two or three buttons that allows the user to move the computer's cursor to activate um, and perform functions within the computer software. So there's five types. There's serial mouse, the uh, bus mouse, the PS2 mouse, and the USB mouse. You can read about those. You'll have to know the difference between each. So there's three types of mice commonly used. There's the mechanical, the optical, and the optomechanical. So uh, mechanical uses a rubber ball and um, it has sensing devices. So the optical uses high intensity diode that bounces light off the surface and back to the receiver inside the mouse. And the um, optomechanical is a mouse that is hybrid between the two. So it has a rubber ball that interacts with rollers that trigger optical sensors within the mouse. So kind of cool. Scanners, devices that capture drawings or written paper documents and converts them to digital images or documents that can be edited. So uh, special image scanners and radiology departments are used to convert an analog film image into a digital image. Um, this is, uh, we do this so that they can compare images within the PAC system side by side on the monitors because it's really hard to look at a view box and then look at the monitor um, to compare um, the images. So we use these scanners so that we can put them into the PAC system. So speakers receive sound from a sound card that is built into the motherboard or an expansion board. So sound data are converted from an electrical signal to a series of vibrations in the speakers to create the sound. So um, microphones are used to record my voice that I'm currently talking to you on or to use as voice dictation software that the radiologists use. So the software is very common now and I don't know of anyone that uses a translation service sounds like everybody's using voice um, dictation software, which takes a while to train the software to the way that the people speak, but um, it's a lot more cost effective and a lot faster. So monitors, there's two types of monitors. There's the cathode ray tube, which is the CRT, and there's the liquid crystal display, which is the LCD. There's a third type that's gaining acceptance, the OLED, so it's the organic light emitting diode. So to understand how the monitors work, we have to look at several basic terms, measurements related to 
viewing. So pixels are the basic picture element on a display. So a pixel, an individual individual controllable set of dot triads. So what's a dot triad? It's a grouping of one red dot, one green dot, and one blue dot. So matrix. It's a rectangular or square table arrangement of numbers that represent a pixel intensity to the, to the display on the monitor. So what is resolution? It's a number of pixels contained on a display. The relationship between pixels and resolution. So the more pixels in an image, the higher the resolution of the image, the more information that can be displayed. So resolution. Um, a process or capability of distinguishing between individual parts of an image that are adjacent. So common screen resolutions um, are a typically now is a, a 10 by 2048 um, or we got a 2048 by a 2560. Uh, 1024 by 1024 is common also. So um, they're all different sizes. The radiologist monitors are really, really high. They're triple this. So dot pitch is the measure of how close the dots are located to one another within a pixel. The smaller the dot pitch of a display, the finer the resolution. So the dot pitch may also be expressed as aperture grill pitch or slot pitch. Ugh. So refresh rate for the CRT and response rate for the LCD is a measure of how fast the monitor rewrites the screen. So the number of times that the image is redrawn on the display each second. So refresh rate helps to control the flicker seen by the user. The higher the refresh rate, the less flicker seen. That's important. So the response rate is a measure of the time it takes for the crystals to go from an off state to an on state and vice versa. So going from on to off or off to on. Slower response time causing blurring uh, during the viewing and, of dynamic images. So, so the aspect ratio is the width of the monitor to the height of the monitor. So CRT monitors have an aspect ratio of 4 to 3, whereas LCD monitors have a ratio of 6 to 9. So viewable area is measured from one corner of the display to the opposite corner when you go diagonally when you measure that. So CRT monitors consist of a cathode and an anode within a vacuum tube. So the cathode boils off a cloud of electrons, sound familiar? Then a potential difference is placed on the tube, hmm. A stream of electrons is sent across the monitor's anode, which is a sheet of glass coated with the phosphor layer. You're gonna learn all about this when we get to fluoro. Um, electrons strike the phosphor on the glass and the impact causes the glass to emit a color based on the intensity of the impact and the area that the electrons interact. So the electrons interact with a red, green, or blue dot uh, to form a color in an image that is being sent from the video card signal. So an electron beam starts in the upper left hand corner and scans across the glass from side to side, top to bottom. <clears throat> when the beam reaches the bottom, it starts back um, over at the top left. Monitor, most monitors have 350 uh, lines to be scanned. LCD. So LCD produces images by shining or reflecting light through a layer of liquid crystal and a series of color filters. So two pieces of polarized glass with a liquid crystal material in between them. So light is allowed through the first layer of the glass. When a current is applied to the liquid crystal, it aligns and allows light in varying intensities to go through to the next layer of glass and through color filters. So light forms the colors and the images seen on the display. Particularly effective in brightly lit rooms. So your cathode ray tubes do not do well in a brightly lit room, whereas these LCDs do really well in our workrooms. Um, the image fades as viewing angle moves away. So with the cathode ray tubes, you can be at an angle to the monitor and be able to see it just fine. But these LCDs, you need to be looking at them straight on or else um, you can't see well. So there's... Um, monitor advantages and disadvantages between uh, your CRT, your uh, LCD, and your plasma. So 
go ahead and look at those and memorize those. So, um, historically, radiology departments use CRTs because of their superior resolution, but LCDs have taken over. So we use them now. Um, all of your um, imaging departments have LCD. Some of the really old fluoro equipment still has some CRT um, cathode ray tubes. So the operating system, the OS, is the software that controls the computer hardware and acts as a bridge between applications and hardware. So three major OS's are in use today. So you have Windows by Microsoft, you have Macintosh um, OS, and you have Unix. So there's four types of operating systems. There's the real-time operating system. It's used to control specific machinery, scientific instruments, and industrial systems such as digital x-ray consoles found on modern x-ray equipment. There's the single-use, single-task operating system designed so that the computer can effectively do one task for one person at a time, such as like your handheld uh, organizers. There's a single user multitask operating system. It's designed for one user to perform multiple functions at the same time, so that's like your personal computer. And then there's the multiple user operating system. So it's designed to handle multiple users and multiple tasks at the same time, um, such as Unix running on a large server or as a mainframe computer supporting the entire company. So mainframe is the big one for that one. So the computer must have an operating system loaded for it to be able to fully come up to function um, as it was intended. So the operating system takes over just after the computer boots up, just after it wakes up, and allows the computer to begin doing tasks. So all other software runs using the operating software. So various programs that are used on the computer were specifically designed to run on the OS that is loaded on your computer. So early operating systems such as MS-DOS um, were really difficult to use. Today, most computers are use graphic, graphical user interfaces, GUI, and picture icons-based programs to perform various functions. So it's like a point and click gives you a picture and you can click on it. So the GUI, so the GUI, has an easy to use drop down word menus that can be selected instead of the icon to perform various functions. So, all right, so IBM is typically Windows, um, as you know. So large workstations that are used to complete multiple tasks may use Windows, NX, Unix, uh, Linksys, and o or as the OS. So Unix, so it's more robust. So it's first developed by um, Bell Laboratories, and it was given to universities, which is kind of cool. So Unix primarily uh, used by industry for large server applications. Some PAX vendors began their software on Unix-based systems, but have since migrated to a Windows platform because of the cost, easy use, and customer demand. So Linksys uh, derives from Unix and is widely used by computer um, aficionados. So when um, open source computers, uh, programmers can make changes in code as long as the changes are shared with others. So that's, that's good. All digital medical imaging devices has some sort of OS running uh, behind the user interface. So the OS may be one of three major OS or it may be proprietary. Um, written and known only by the vendor. Uh, most modern packs use a window-based platform, so some may still use Unix on their larger uh, servers because of the multitasking capabilities. So, um, computer hardware and software are chosen to match the applications used by people in the department. So, four areas to address when choosing uh, your software system within radiology is the comfort, the cost, the quality, and the purpose. So it's really important. So here's a good example. A radiologist require a monitor with high brightness, high resolution, large screen to view digital images for diagnosis, and the file room clerk would only need basic monitors. So what you have in your workspaces um, in radiology are not even close to what the radiologist has. Um, they need to have higher resolution and brighter monitors. 
So um, when we look at this, so in February 2011, the FDA cleared um, radiologists to be able to read on mobile devices, which is really interesting. So they can read um, CT, MRI, NucMed on mobile devices. So that's good news. The summary is here. I'm going to have you read the summary, and um, I'm going to go through Chapter 8, so you'll have to know Chapter 7 and Chapter 8. Okay?